All right, so again, 4B.2, part three, objective, use matrix multiplication to apply a linear transformation to a specific point. So what we're doing, and so you have the paper. Um, first, we're going to review linear transformations and do some matrix operations. And then we're going to convert to a matrix and use the connection between the two, okay? So we're going to start off slow, all right? So here we have, so here we have, uh, the transformation is given to us. So our linear transformation is 4x minus 3y gives us our first coordinate, comma, negative 3x plus 5y gives us our second coordinate, and together that's our answer, okay? So they have given us an x's and y's to transform. Does that make sense? So we have points that we're going to be transforming and moving ourselves. So this is the value of my x, and this is the value of my why? And all we're doing is plugging them in for their transformation. So we're about to do the transformation of 3, 2, which is going to lead us to, so we have 4 times 3 minus 3 times 2, comma, negative 2 times 3, uh-oh, okay, times 3 plus 5 times 2. And that's what we're simplifying. Yes? Easy enough? Okay. So 4 times 3 is going to give us 12. So we have 12 minus 6 is our first ordered pair. First, first coordinate, I'm sorry. And then we have negative 3 times 2. I mean, negative 2 times 3 gives us negative 6. And 5 times 2 gives us 10. So what is... What is our transformed point. Six, four. Now, was that terrible? Yeah, you wanted it to be, but it's not. I, I saw it in your eyes. All right, so I'm going to give you, let's say, five minutes. And you're going to go through practice, plugging in, simplifying, and identifying where the transform point is going to be. Cool? All right, let's go. And let me know if you need help or if you have any questions or you're like, where is she getting these numbers from? Who are you getting these numbers from? See, I need someone to ask me something. I see a lot. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, it's not like it's
Don't cross the comma. Don't cross the comma. Okay, well, we're like six and seven. If you go to the announcements, the alternative is not sent to you. Okay. That can be done on paper. So those are the two. All right. All right. That is time. All right. How do we feel about it? Good. Doable. All right. So do you I need to work it out or y'all confident just telling me not ordered pairs? Are we okay with just saying the ordered pairs out loud? And see how we do. All right, B, what is B's transformation, transform point? I got negative 13, 17. 17, right? Okay, good. All right, what about C? What did y'all get for C? Don't be shy. We got what? Negative 31 and 33, how we do? Are we in a consensus? All right. Okay, what about D's transform point? We got 18 and negative 30, right? Yeah. Yes. We're all freaking out about big numbers. You're like, what did I do? <laughs> you did nothing wrong. Good job. All right. What about E? We got 23 and negative 29. Any disagreements? There you go. All right, was it terrible? No, Ms. Jones, it wasn't. Because we all know how to multiply and add for the most part. If not, we, we'll get a little A from our calculator, right? All right, okay, so that was practice. Now we're gonna talk about how do you add and subtract matrices, okay? In order to add or subtract two matrices, they must have the same dimensions, okay? Meaning that the R and the C have to be the same, okay? If they're not the same, then you just say no solution, not possible, right? So um, all you're doing literally is just corresponding entry slash elements to each other. So if they're both element 11, they're gonna be added or subtracted together. If they're both element 12, they're going to be added or subtracted together. So that pretty straightforward. So up first, we have these three matrices. So we have matrix A, B, and C. So we're going to first identify the dimensions of each one of them, okay? So the dimensions of matrix A are what? What's the dimensions? It's a two by two. Dimensions of matrix B, what is B? A two by three. And the dimensions of C is also a two by three, okay? All right, so up first, it says to add matrix A plus matrix B. Well, matrix A and matrix B, can they be added together? No, so the answer is not possible. And why is it not possible? Because they have different dimensions. You see how that works? Okay, what about A plus C? Can I do that? Not possible. Why is it not possible? 
It does have same numbers, different dimensions. Okay, so again, the dimensions have to be the same. All right, what about B minus C? Can I do that? I can. I can do B minus C because their dimensions are the same. So when you're doing B minus C, you're literally doing element 11 minus element 11. Element 12 minus ele element 12. Does that make sense? So when we are, we're going to make our matrix. So we have negative 2. And what's its corresponding matrix? 5 minus 5. That's going to be 1. Then I'm going to do 1. 1 is going to be minus negative 3. Does that make sense? Okay, on to the next, our next column. So we have 7 minus what? 3. And then we have negative 6 minus 0. And then we have our third column. Negative 3 minus negative 1. And then our last element is 0 minus 6. Why did I write this so big? I really don't know. So now I'm going to have to squeeze my answers in. All right. So negative 2 minus 5 is you owe me $2. You're like, hey, let me borrow another 5. So now you owe me how much? Negative 7. A negative times a negative makes a positive. So this becomes 1 plus 3. And what's 1 plus 3? 4. All right. Second column, 7 minus 3 is 4. Negative 6 minus 0 is negative 6. Anything minus 0 is its self. Again, a negative times a negative makes a positive. So you owe me $3 and you give me $1. What's your balance? You still owe me $2. And zero minus six dollars. You have no money in your bank account and you go spend six dollars. What's your new bank account? Negative six. Yes. All right. So I'm going to give you a minute to do B plus C. Your turn. Probably. Uh, this one? Yeah. It's a one. Minus negative three. Oh. Yeah. Which is why it became a negative times a negative made it a positive. So looking at. All right. So you're doing B plus C. Remember, corresponding oh. element to corresponding oh. element. Don't just write that mentally. You can just write it. You can do it mentally. Of course, I had to write it out the first time. But as long as you can do it mentally to create your, your sum. How are we feeling about addition and subtraction? Easy peasy, right? All right, so we're going to do it out loud. Here we go. Um, so B plus C. So we're starting off with negative 2 plus 5. What is negative 2 plus 5? 3. Then we have 1 plus negative 3. Negative 2. Perfect. Now we have 7 plus 3. Perfect. Negative 6 plus 0. Awesome. Negative 3 plus negative 1. And then we have 0 plus 6. 6. Bam. Ta-da! That's addition and subtraction of matrices. Easy peasy. All right, let's move on. Now we're going to talk about matrix multiplication, okay? Matrix multiplication is called scalar multiplication when you're just distributing, okay? So you, you remember how we distribute when we are distributing over addition with multiplication, okay? 
All it is is distribution, okay? Matrix, matrix multiplication, scalar multiplication is just distribution. Got it? So when it says apply this, all you're doing. So notice here we have the element K, and we're going to just distribute. Pew, pew, pew. I call this the Oprah property. You get a K, you get a K, you get a K, you get a K, you get a K. We all get K, okay? Um, because back in the day, Oprah used to give everyone her show a prize every day, you know? So that's why I call it the Oprah property. Because everyone has to get the K. All right? Yes? All right. So matrix multiplication, scalar multiplication. What does it look like for our first one? This is mine, and everybody's getting a what? Everybody gets a six. You get a six. You get a six. So what are my results? Six, and then what? Zero, then, and then, bam. It's not a trick. That's it. That's it. I know you're hesitant. <laughs> you're like, what is she doing? But that's all it is with scalar multiplication. All right, so on B, what do we get? And then, and then, and then, and, and, 16. Bam. Yay? We can scalar multiply. That's it. Moving on. Boop. All right. Next is called matrix, actual matrix multiplication is called dot product, okay? So scalar multiplication, there's two types of matrix multiplication. You have scalar and you have dot product, okay? Dot product is a little different. With dot product, you are um, creating a pattern as you multiply, okay? So when you have here, did I leave the blanks for you to fill in? Good, I think I did. So in order for two matrices to be able to multiply, they must have the same inside. So when it's sitting next to each other, notice that the number of columns here has to equal the number of rows here. Okay. I call this a smile check. When I write my dimensions next to each other, they better smile at me. Okay. If they don't smile at me, if they can't be connected, then it can't be multiplied. Okay. So that's thing number one. You have to check it. The numbers that are on the end, those are going to be your new dimensions. So what's left on the end are going to be the new dimensions of your matrix. Okay, so what's left, M and P are now the dimensions of your new matrix. So I know my new matrix is going to be as big as however this is. Okay, so it's a process. It's a process to dot product. When you're applying dot product, there is a pattern that you have to follow. All right, so the first pattern is you're taking your A1 and you're going to multiply it by everything in the first column. So you're going to have A1 times A2 plus A1 times C2. And that's going to be your first new element. So it's a pattern that you're following. So your first element times everything in the first column. And you're adding them together. Okay, that's going to be your first new element. Then you're going to do the next thing. You're going to do the same thing, but this time you're going to take A1 and multiply everything in the second column. And that's gonna be your second. So we end up with A1 times B2 plus B1 times D2. So I took A1 and I multiplied it times B2, A1 times D2. Everything in the first row times everything in the first column. No, I'm sorry. I'm saying it wrong. I said it wrong verbally. Yes. Everything in the first row times everything in the first column. Everything in the first row times everything in the second column. My words were coming out wrong. It was me. I was the problem. Okay. Once you do your first row, all you're changing is your A, B, A, and B. It's now going to become your C and your D. So once you do your first row of the new one, all that's changing is your A1, B1, your first row. And it's going to be replaced with C1, D1, C1, D1. And then if there was more, you just keep replacing that. Well, 
let you marinate on it. Come in. All right. This is one where we have to see it come up, come together, okay? Are we ready for an example? Okay. So, do these look familiar? Do you guys remember our linear transformations? So, when we had our linear transformations and we turned them into matrix, we had two by two and a two by one, correct? And so... That's where this comes from. That's how that works because of dot product, all right? So what we're doing is, we're, again, we're going to take, sorry, we're going to take our elements in our first row and multiply them to the elements in our first column, okay? But before we do that, I'm going to show you why we can do this. The dimensions of our first matrix is a two by two. The dimensions of our second matrix is a two by one. Notice that it's smiling at me, right? Because the insides match up. That means that my new matrix is going to be a two by one. Call this the matrix face. Do you see the face? Okay. So that means that I'm going to now create a two by one matrix. So I'm going to have two rows with one column. Got it? All right. So this equals, and now we're going to start our process. I know I have to have two rows with one column because that's what my face is telling me. So my first row comes from three times two. So we have three times two plus negative one times three. Negative one times three. I'm gonna switch colors. My second row is gonna come from four times two plus zero times three. And then I clean that up. So my resulting matrix, my product is going to be three times two is six. Negative one times three is negative three. Four times two is eight. Zero times three is zero. Keep cleaning it up. Six minus three is three and eight plus zero is eight. And so my product is three, eight. This is my final answer. Okay, because these all have the same dimensions of two by two and two by one, I know that this is gonna work for every single one. Does that make sense? All right, so what you're gonna do is practice it. Do you need to see me do it one more time before I let you fly? Okay, I'll do it one more time. But you're doing three and four for sure by yourselves. Okay. All right. So again, we know that we're producing a two by one. So I'm going to have two rows and just one column. So we have negative five times one. The lines help me. That's why I make the lines, by the way. So I have negative five times one plus zero times seven. Zero times seven. Then I have three times one, three times one, plus one times seven, one times seven. Remember I told you that second factor is gonna stay the same in each row. Do we see that those second factors stay the same? My one and my seven stayed my one and my seven. Now I'm gonna simplify, start simplifying. Negative five times one is negative five. Zero times seven is? zero, three times one is three, one times seven is seven. So my product is negative five, 10. Yeah. All right, again, lines help me because I know that I'm gonna have two rows. I know that underneath these numbers, there should be two of them. Does that make sense? 
Okay. Um, your turn. Okay. How many of y'all felt as you were doing it, you got a little faster at it? A little bit? Somewhat? Okay. Um, so here on this one, again, we're going to have 1 times negative 2 plus negative 4 times 3. Then we end up with 12 times negative 2 plus 3 times 3. Correct? So we end up with negative 2 minus 12. Then we have negative 24 plus 9. Still with me? So we end up with negative 14. And what'd you get? Negative 24 and 9 makes negative 15. Awesome sauce. Then we keep going. We keep it going. Keep it going. And we end up with 3 times negative 2 plus 7 times negative 5. And then we have 2 times negative 2 plus 1 times negative 5. And we end up with negative 6 minus 35. And we have negative 4 minus 5, which leads us to negative 41 and negative 9. Yeah? All right. So you're probably like, what does this have to do with linear transformation, Ms. Jones? Like, where does this come together? Well, this is basically what we were doing when we were plugging in our values. So I'm going to go back the screen for you. Ignore all the backwards, literally going backwards. Remember these guys? That's what we just did. We just did what you, what you did here. We just did it in matrix format. So it's the exact same process if you look back at our values. So if you look at the numbers, did we not end up multiplying? and adding or subtracting? Did we not end up multiplying, adding, or subtracting to create our two coordinates? Yeah, so that is why these are tied together. So, go up, or just hide. There we go. So let's go and see how that comes out together. All right, so our input, the difference here is that's your input. So your two, three, this right here, this is your X and this is your Y. It's your input that you plugged in, okay? And then the other coordinates are going to be your values, okay? So the 3, the negative 1, that's your 3x minus 1y. That 4, 0, that is your 4x plus 0y. So let's see how that turns into this. So we have transformation of 2, 3 equals, and I need to, let me hijack something real quick. So I don't have to keep going back and forth. All right. So what we have here is the transformation of 2, 3. So 2, 3 transform using this transformation rule. And now we're going to make it into a coordinate function rule to follow. So again, remember how we wrote the first row are your coefficients of your first coordinate, right? So we end up with 3x minus 1y comma, and then the second row it, are the coefficients of your second coefficient, which means your second coordinate, which gives us 4x plus 0y. And what was our result? What did we get? What was our answer to our matrix? We got 3, 8, so therefore the output is 3, comma, 8. If I was to plug in 2 and 3, would I still get 3 and 8 from that? I surely would. Oh my gosh, math is connected. That's crazy. Who would have guessed it? Okay. Uh, so again, one seven. So again, this is your X and your Y that was plugged in. So the transformation of one seven equals, so how do we transform it? We had negative five X plus zero Y comma three X plus 1y, and what was the result of our, what was the product of our matrix? We got negative 5, 10, so therefore our output would ne be negative 5, 10. If you didn't believe it, you can plug it in. If I plug in 1 for x, that gives me negative 5, plug in um, 7 for y, that's 0. What's negative 5 plus 0? Negative 5, okay? Same thing here, 3 times 1 is? 3, 
plus seven is 10. So this is the exact process that we went through, right? So we did negative five times one plus zero times seven. Isn't that what's taking place here? That's all it is, is seeing that connection and tying it together. Okay, so now we have T of negative two comma three. So what's the transformation rule for this one? It'll be X. Perfect. Perfect. And what was the result of our matrix? What was our product? So therefore our ordered pair is gonna be negative 14 and It's not. What are you talking about? Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Good catch, Keith. All right, so on four, we had the transformation of negative two, negative five. And how did we transform negative two, negative five? Three. Uh-huh. And then the other part was, and what was our result of our, what was the product of our matrix? So our ordered pair would be, our output would be negative 41 and nine. Huh? Oh, I didn't put it. There you go. Okay. So do we see how they come together? And we were doing it all along. So if you can do the plug-in, you can simply do the dot product. And if you can do the dot product, then you also can do the plug-in. The amount of math that we did for both of them is the same. Make sense? All right, questions, comments, concerns? Good day? All right, so this is the questions that we're gonna ask ourselves. Can you add and subtract and scale or multiply? How do you feel about it? Yes, no, talk to me, I can't hear you. Yes, okay. Can you determine a transformation using its coordinate points? Yes, all right. And can you determine the transformation using its matrix? Can we go backwards? Do you feel confident in going backwards? All right, then it was a successful day. All right, there is a Canvas assignment um, for you. So you have your take-home quiz and you have a Canvas assignment. Got it? All right.